Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutali Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharya Nirvasesha Shunyuari Pasca Chade Satar Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadana Sri Vasadi Guru Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram We're going to speak from the seventh canto of Sri Bhagavatam, ninth chapter, titled Prahlad pacifies the Lord with prayers. After Lord Nisringma killed Haranyakasi Pu, he was still very angry. He seated himself on Haranyakasi Pu's royal throne, but no one could pacify him. Even the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, was afraid to approach him. But what to speak of great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Indra. Lord Brahma then told Prahlad, you approach Lord Nishringadeva, you pacify him. Despite the Lord's great ferocious appearance, Prahlad approached without the least fear. He fell down at the lotus feet of the Lord and the Lord was so touched by this young boy approaching him in this humble manner that he reached down and touched his head. Immediately, Prahlad was enthused with all Vedic knowledge and he began to offer prayers to the Lord. Prahlad prayed, how is it possible for me who have been born in the family of Asuras to offer suitable prayers to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. Even up till now, all the demigods headed by Lord Brahma and all saintly persons could not satisfy the Lord by streams of excellent words, although such persons are very qualified because they are in the mode of goodness. Then what is to be said of me? I am not at all qualified. This is the attitude of a great Vaishnava. Although Prahlad was the greatest of devotees, he was very humble. It is reminiscent of the words of Krishna Das Kaviraj in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita when he says that if someone even mentions my name, he'll lose all his pious credits. A devotee does not think himself great or even worthy of approaching the Lord. But due to his humbleness, the Lord is very happy to greet him and embrace him. Lord Chaitanya has embraced this proper attitude of a Vaishnava in his third Sikshastaka. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind. Mahaprabhu goes on to say, he should think himself lower than the straw on the street. He should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respect to others. Lord Chaitanya concludes, in such a humble state of mind, one can chant the holy name constantly. Unless one is humble and meek, it is very difficult to make progress in the spiritual life. Prahlad then goes on to mention many qualifications that have great value in the material world. Among these are wealth, aristocratic birth, personal beauty, austerity, good education, personal expertise, bodily influence, physical strength, great endeavor, intelligence, and mystic power. Prahlad says, however, I think that even all of these qualifications 
cannot satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. However, Prahlad says, one can satisfy the Lord simply by pure devotional service. Then he recalls the example of Gajendra. He says, Gajendra did this, and the Lord was satisfied with him. Then he takes the opposite attack, he says, even if a brahmana, who is the highest of all material uh, qualifications, has all twelve brahminical qualifications, but is not a devotee, and is adverse to the lotus feet of the Lord, he is certainly lower than a devotee who is a dog eater, but who has dedicated everything, mind, words, activities, wealth, and life, to the Supreme Lord. Then Prahlad explains why this is so. Such a devotee is better than a brahmana because the devotee can purify his whole family, whereas the so-called brahmana, in a position of false prestige, cannot purify even himself. Then Prahlad says, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always full in himself. Therefore, when something is offered to him, by, uh, the offering by the Lord's mercy is for the benefit of the devotee. The Lord is full in himself. This is the statement of Sri Isopanishad. The Lord is complete. You cannot add anything to him. You cannot take anything away. Rather, when one glorifies the Lord, it is not the Lord who benefits. It is not the Lord who gains. It is the devotee who gains. The Lord does not need anything. He doesn't need anyone's praise. He doesn't need anyone's blessing. He is complete. Prahlad uses the example here. When one's face is decorated, the reflection of one's face, face in a mirror is seen to be decorated also. Not only does the Lord appear glorious, but the devotee also appears glorious. Therefore, the benefit of our devotional service is not to the Lord, but to oneself. Sometimes neophyte devotees, they think, well, what will I get out of all this devotional service? Of course, that is not the attitude of pure devotional service. Pure devotional service, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, is a hoitikiya priyata. It is unmotivated and uninterrupted. But the fact is that when we render devotional service to the Lord, we are the benefactor. Our hearts are changed. We become purified by the words emanating uh, from our mouth in glorification of the Lord. Therefore, Prahlad concludes, although I was born in a demoniac family, I may, without a doubt, offer prayers to the Lord with full endeavor, as far as my intelligence allows. And that goes for all of us. No matter what family we're born in, no matter what country we're born in, no matter what language we speak, we are qualified to offer prayers to the Lord with a pure heart. Prahlad says, my dear Lord, who is never conquered by anyone, I am certainly not afraid of your ferocious mouth and tongue. Your eyes blazing like the sun, or your frowning eyebrows. I do not fear your sharp, pinching teeth, your garland of intestines, your mane soaked with blood, or your high, wedge-like ears. Nor do I fear your tumultuous roaring, which makes even the elephants flee to distant places nor do I fear your sharp nails, which are meant for killing your enemies. A devotee has no fear because he is approaching the Lord with pure love, 
The example here is Prahlad, a five-year-old boy, simply by falling down at the lotus feet of the Lord in humble submission. Lord Nishringadev was so pleased that he reached down and put it, pulled the boy up and put him on his lap. Similarly, the more we make ourselves lowly and humble ourselves, the more we will please the Lord who will respond by his loving glance and embrace. There is nothing we can give the Lord except our love. One may ask, but why does Krishna want our love? What, if he has everything, what's he want our love for? The answer is that Krishna's nature is love. Just as one looks into a mirror to appreciate his own appearance, the Lord wants to understand his love to his devotee by the reflection of the devotee's love for him. That is the nature of love. Love requires a beloved and a lover. When we show love for the Lord, we begin to understand his love for us. And by our love for him, he understands the glory of his love for us. Now, who has a question today? Bhaktivedanta, it's it said that uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, here we see that Prahlad was uh, not fearful in approaching the Lord. So is fear of God a, a good thing or not a good thing? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but it's not the result of wisdom. It's not the end of wisdom. To fear God is the proper attitude to approach. But actually, when we approach with reverence and fear, the Lord reciprocates as he did with Prahlad, who fell down at his feet in humility. He, re he responded with love by picking up Prahlad and embracing him. Another question? Srila Bhaktivan, how can we get humility in our attitude. Have you read my book? Humbler than the blade of grass? Humility, of course, is, is uh, the opposite of pride. The natural condition for the conditioned soul is pride. Thinking that he is this body, he is very proud of the conditions of the body, like physical beauty, physical strength, physical intelligence, etc. Just as Prahlad listed all the qualities that are appreciated by materialists and said, all of these are sources of pride. Only when one humbles himself, as Prahlad did by falling down to the Lord, as if to say, Lord, I am nothing, but I am your servant. So that must be the attitude of all of us. My dear Lord, I have no qualifications. I am simply your eternal servant. Now order your servant and I will try to do it. We have summarized that in the little mantra. Thank you, Lord, for now as it is. How do I use now as it is in the best way for your service and pleasure, Lord? I'm willing to do whatever you want. Confident you have a perfect plan for me. And I'll be patient to understand and persevere. Thank you very much. <laughs>